Welcome back. So we're going to solve the same circuit now, but we're going to use the iterative method. I'm going to be as explicit as I can. And the points that we have to do here is, or the point I have to do, I've got to list out the, uh, the different Ohm's laws. So really we have seven Ohm's, or seven, not Ohm's laws, seven laws that we have to work with here. First one is Ohm's law. And we should always, in the iterative method, if you can solve Ohm's law somewhere, solve it. Okay, it's the easiest one to use, easiest one to solve. So we start there. If you can't solve Ohm's law, the next step is current in series, which is equal in all points in the series. Okay, the second one, IP, or VP, sorry, voltage in parallel, always the same in the entire stream. So voltage in parallel. So that's the next the little box around that. So we keep it separate. The next set are all the ones where they add up, just directly add up. So let's do uh, series first, resistance in series. So the resistors in series, the, they, the resistances add up, and voltages in series follow the same law. <clears throat> and finally, currents in parallel. They also add up for a box around those. So that's the next step I go to when I'm trying to solve a circuit. And then the final one is the resistances in parallel. It's the most complicated one. It's not hard, just complicated. So resistors in parallel follow this rule here, the inverted addition rule. Make that two. Okay, so this is the order we go in. If we can solve Ohm's law, we do. If we can't solve Ohm's law, then we try the easy Kirchhoff's laws. If we solve those, then we come back to Ohm's law and try again. If we get a number, a new number, anytime you get a new number, check Ohm's law and start at the beginning of the chart. If it doesn't work, we try RS, or the, uh, the, the three addition laws. And if that's successful, Back, we go to Ohm's law. If it's not successful, if it doesn't get us what we need, then we go to the resistances in parallel. That's the route we're going to take to solve this circuit this time. And I'm going to have to erase stuff, so pause. As soon as you see me start erasing, pause or rewind and look at it and make sure you understand what I have done. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to write in the given values here, just to save us a little bit of time later on. 90 volts is the total voltage. R1 is 18 ohms. R2 is 12 ohms. R3 is 18 ohms, and R4 is 9 ohms. So we really only have uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 items to fill in. <clears throat> I know, only, he says. So let's do our check. I'm going to erase these arrows because I'm going to use arrows to talk about this as I go. Step one, can I solve Ohm's law anywhere? Well, there's no point on here where for a specific point, I have two of the three values in Ohm's law. So I cannot get a value using Ohm's law. So I'm going to move forward. Can I use current everywhere? Obviously not. I don't have any currents. Can I use voltage everywhere in parallel? Yes, I can. Because I have two streams in parallel with the total of 90 volts. So I know that I have 90 volts coming in here, and I have 90 volts coming in here. It doesn't solve any of my main values, but it's information. So that's useful. Okay, so that's the first step. Now I go back. So I've solved it. I come back to here and say, can I use Ohm's law anywhere? Well, I don't know the total resistance in the first stream because it's parallel. I haven't calculated that. I don't know the total resistance in the second stream, and I have no currents. So I'm not ready there yet. So I'm going to go a little further. So let's pretend red means no. I can't get, use this law, so I'll try these ones. Can I do resistances in series? Well, yeah, I can do a resistance in series. On this second stream here, let's call this stream B, and we'll call the other one A. On the second stream, I can add the resistances. 18 plus 12 is going to give me 30 ohms here. So I have 30 ohms across that. <clears throat> now I have 30 ohms across here and 90 volts. I can get the current here. So I've got, I, I'm going back to Ohm's law. I successfully got a value. I go back to Ohm's law, and I can use Ohm's law. 90 volts 
divided by 30 ohms equals 3 amps. So I know that I have 3 amps across this level. So that's Ohm's law being used after I have calculated another value. Now see how I'm getting values faster on this one? That's okay. It's, uh, it helps. It's nice to do. So now I have 3 amps across this stream. So let's, uh, let's move that 3 amps over and put it right here. Now let's go through our, current, our, our laws. Can I do the current in series? Yes, because I have 3 amps going through this series on the bottom, which means I have 3 amps here and 3 amps here. These are values I can enter in. R1, or resistor 1, has a current of 3 amps. Resistor 2 has a current of 3 amps. Successfully made another number, found another number, which means I go back to Ohm's law again. Back to Ohm's law, do I have anything where I can use Ohm's law? Yeah, right here. Right? 3, voltage is current times resistance, so current is 3, volt, or resistance is 12, 3 times 12 is 36 volts. Up here, same thing, 18 times 3 is 54 volts. Okay, so I have now solved the bottom part of this the bottom stream of this, uh, this this series. Now, my next step, well, solutions, always start at Ohm's Law. I don't have any options for Ohm's Law to fill anything new in. I'm, I'm done with this bottom half, okay? <clears throat> but I've got to do the top half. Now, I have 90 volts coming in, so let's start with Ohm's Law and work our way down. It's a parallel stream, so I'll just skip straight to the first parallel thing. Oh, look at that. Voltages are equal in parallel. That means this voltage and this voltage are equal to this voltage here. So we've got 90 volts here, and we have 90 volts here. So let's write those numbers in. For V3, we have 90 volts. And for V4, we have 90 volts. What does that mean? Always go ohm. Always go back and check. We have 90 volts and 9 ohms in resistor 4 gives us a current of 10 amps. 90 volts and 18 ohms, 90 divided by 18 is 5, so we get a current of 5 amps. And we can always check this. 5 amps here, sorry, 10 amps here, and 5 amps here adds up to 15. Okay, we will have to check that later on. We haven't actually worked out the total resistance of stream A yet. So we might have to do that later on and check our numbers. But right now, let's just be confident that the iterative method is doing what it's supposed to do. So now we have... <clears throat> let's, uh, let's write some numbers back in here because we, we haven't figured out our totals yet. Total current, total resistance. So we have 3 amps and 90 volts on this one and a total resistance of 30 ohms. And up here we have 90 volts, and that's all we know at the moment. No, we don't, because we have, what do we have? Uh, I3 is 10 amps, no, 5 amps, and I4 is 10 amps. So let's work our way from there, all right? Starting with Ohm's Law, work our way down. Voltage is in parallel, in, in parallel, we've already taken care of that. Okay, resistance is in series, voltage is in series, well we're working with a parallel circuit there to get the information we need. Current in parallel, 10 amps, 5 amps, that adds up to 15 amps. So we've got 15 amps here, and we have 3 amps here. Now we've got 15 amps, can we use Ohm's law? Yeah, 90 volts, 15 amps is going to give us 6 ohms. Okay, and that might come in handy at some point. But 15 amps is useful because now we come back, start with Ohm's Law, we did it. Voltages and currents, series in parallel, not any use. If we come down here, we have two currents in parallel right there. So we can say 3 amps plus 15 amps is 18 amps, which gives us a total current of 18 amps in the circuit. Always go Ohm. We have a voltage and a current. We can figure out our resistance. 90 divided by 18 is 5 ohms. We've now solved our circuit. 
And again, I always say you should check to make sure that these numbers work out. So let's see what we have to do to check it. What have we not used? Well, in this iteration series, we didn't use the resistances in parallel. So let's do that quickly. Well, you know what? I'm going to leave that one to you because of time. I've, got, I've gone 10 minutes. You can go back and look at the way we did it last time. And that will show you resistances in parallel and make sure that everything works out. Okay? So check it yourself. And <clears throat> remember, this weekend your job is to make up circuits. Try and make up a series parallel combination circuit where everything comes out the whole numbers, kind of like this one. Good luck. Have an awesome weekend. See you Monday.